Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name's Tori. So today we're going to talk all things white tree frogs. I used to say white but it is actually white's fun fact of the day but I've just finished building them a new fully bioactive enclosure that I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you a bit about them, obviously show you my habitat that I've built and yeah white tree frogs are one of my faves to keep. They are so funny, they're so fun. I love interacting with them. They are kind of a hands-off reptile, you're not supposed to handle them but in terms of feeding and watching them in their natural environment. Absolutely love these guys. So I actually own three white tree frogs, one male and two females. I actually keep them over here behind me, but I'll of course be giving you lots of close-ups as we go through this video. So their names are Drogon, Khaleesi and Tyrion. As you can tell, I'm a bit of a Game of Thrones fan. So I'm currently keeping them in just under a five by two by two. I say that because it's not a branded enclosure. I got it from Facebook Marketplace. I always tell people, getting closer from Facebook Marketplace, it makes it so much cheaper, so much more cost effective. So I'm pretty sure they like built it and I bought it off them and it's somewhere between the four and five foot mark. We'll go through lighting, substrate, how I set it up, we'll get there. But firstly, a little bit on white tree frogs. So they're like medium sized arboreal frogs, meaning they really like the height. So it's important to think about when you're setting up an enclosure that they get the height space. They're actually Northern Eastern Australian. Did I say they're Australian? They're from Northern Eastern Australia. They're from the more tropical habitat. So I will come into this when we're talking about humidity, but you know, they get a lot of their water from the leaves, but they are actually able to adapt to dry environments as well. They're about three to five inches. I'll again show you a very big size difference between a male and a female because the females are a lot bigger and the males are a lot noisier and they're a long-term commitment these guys can live upwards of like 20 years so think about that before bringing them home a bit of a disclaimer because i like to put this really quick disclaimer at the start of all of my videos please 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 do your research on these animals before bringing them home it's important to do research outside of this video as well as of course i hope you enjoyed this video any animals are really big commitment so please keep that in mind and i hope you enjoy the video so in terms of housing these guys size of the enclosure is going to be be very dependent on how many frogs you have because it have because you can cohab size is going to be very dependent on how many frogs you own you can actually cohab these guys so i personally keep three but hence me having such a large enclosure that i can literally stand inside of um i went for having a few more it's also important when you're housing them to make sure they're of a similar size you don't want to buy a baby and throw it in with an adult big female because the likelihood of them eating them is pretty high. They're not the smartest tools in the shed, but if they are the same size, they can be cohab together. They are a species, and I feel like I say this about them all, but they are a species that will really utilize all the space you give them. I was kind of concerned about giving them like a five foot tall enclosure and whether, you know, they would use it all and they'd be flying around, honestly. So the minimum enclosure size that I would recommend for a single frog is an 18 by 18, 24. You can get those in brands like Exoterra. But as I said, if you're going to get an additional frog, you're going to need the added space. For example, if you've got two, you could go for an 18 by 18 by 36. Or if you want to go all out like me and get three or four, you can get a big four foot, five foot tall enclosure. Now onto lighting. Now these guys are a nocturnal species, but that doesn't mean they don't require specific lighting. I've actually really kindly been sent some lighting products from Arcadia. I'm always yelling about these guys on my other socials and they kindly sent me everything that I needed for this setup. And also this is what I'd recommend. Firstly, a halogen heat bulb which will go at the top in a heat fixture i'll of course put a picture of mine this provides an excellent light spectrum i could honestly make a whole 20 minute video talking about lighting but just take my word and say that halogens are the best form of lighting the wattage is going to be very dependent on you and your household and the temperatures your house gets to i have a very warm house because obviously i keep so many reptiles and these guys aren't a really really high temperature species so i've got a 50 watt however in the winter if it does get too cold in this room because this will be the first winter that they're in this room i will upgrade from a 30 watt to possibly 75 but for now, we're using this 50 watt. You better play around and see what wattage works best for you. The next thing you want to provide is a UVB source. Some people say they don't need it. I've personally seen incredible results from all of my reptiles by adding UVB and amphibians. Again, whole lot of video, not going to talk about it now. 
add UVB. A really great way to see which UVB will be good for you and your size enclosure is actually using the Arcadia Lighting Guide, which I'll link in the description below, because your UVB will be very dependent on the size of your enclosure because you don't want too much or too little in terms of your basking spot. But for me personally, I have got the Pro T5 6% UVB. And this is the length of the entire enclosure because there are boreal. And then I have lots of things in the enclosure that they can hide behind if they did want to get out of the UVB. This one is optional, but finally, in terms of lighting, I have got a Jungle Dawn LED bar, but this will just help your plants to grow if you are going to go down the route of having a bioactive enclosure. I then also use this thermostat and I'll have this set to my temperature to make sure that it doesn't overheat, especially during the summer months when, you know, on top of the natural ambient temperature, I've also got my halogen bulb. They are susceptible to really hot temperatures. It's not good for them. So thermostat is super, super important. In terms of lighting though, overnight I use absolutely nothing. My house doesn't drop below like 65 Fahrenheit, meaning that they actually appreciate the nighttime drop in temperature. And they also do appreciate complete darkness. So for whatever reason in your house, it does get that, that cold that you need to add some overhead heating. You can use something like a deep heat projector, which will emit heat, but no light. It's important that they have a full night of darkness. As we touched on earlier, they do come from a tropical rainforest type vibe, if you will, <laughs> meaning that they need a higher humidity. I personally use this spray bottle that I have from Amazon. I have such a big one because I have so many reptiles, but you can opt for a smaller version or even like the hand press ones. You know, you can have a workout on your hand if you want to and i personally miss my enclosures twice a day there are automated options like the mist king where you can have this automatically going on and off throughout the day if you are going to be out and about i personally am always here i'm a loser so i just manually missed all my enclosures in terms of how humid i really recommend you get a thermometer slash hydrometer meaning that it will tell you the temperatures and the humidity i get these digital ones from amazon there is a link in the description below it's on my amazon like wish list page thing you want to be aiming to keep the humidity around 50% and then have spikes up to 70. It's also important to kind of let your enclosure dry out, especially in terms of preventing like mold, etc., from growing in your bioactive. So I personally spray at night, it will dry out overnight. I spray again in the morning, let it really dry out throughout the day with my heat bulb on and then spray again at night. In terms of substrate, as I said, I personally went for bioactive, meaning I have a lot of live plants in there, meaning they all need soil, but they also need to be watered. Also, because it's a higher humidity, there's a lot of water in there. It's really important to have a drainage layer if obviously you're going to go this route. So I personally use hydro balls as a drainage layer. This will just allow somewhere for the water to drain and sit rather than just it being in like a damp soil. I then use a thin layer layer of mesh and this will separate the substrate from the drainage layer and then on top of that is my topsoil i use tons and tons of topsoil i don't know if i'll ever be able to move this enclosure it's funny because i'm actually thinking about moving this into my reptile room so that i can build some six foot enclosures here but i don't know how i'm gonna move it i'm talking tons but i did plant some really big plants in there but yeah that is personally the route i went i then also included some plant pots into my background so that i could have some plants draping down as well but i do have the bottom with a few large plants in this substrate also does hold the humidity pretty well in terms of decorating i will of course show you a full rundown of my enclosure in mine i've included a lot of ledges different wood options for them to climb on as well as plants with big leaves they really like to sit on those big leaves that hang down but also plants that are sturdy enough to hold them up. For example, a snake plant would be excellent at being able to hold them versus a spider plant, they're just gonna crush it and destroy it. There are some things I wanna add. I wanna add some, some smaller leaf plants to really fill the space, but these are the main ones that I've gone with. I actually opted for building a background completely myself, which I did using expanding foam and silicone, which is a whole other video. There are lots of tutorials online though, where essentially I used expanding foam, cut this down and covered it in silicone followed by substrate and also placed into that cork bark and wood etc so that it remained fixed to the background and honestly they love up every space of this enclosure i love how it turned out i use cork logs as well so they can sit on those and bask should they opt to a really good enclosure is going to have different opportunities and different choices of enrichment if they don't use something you can switch it out and add something new but the best care always provides options for your animal so yeah this is a full rundown of what my enclosure looks like i am going to be adding 
small plants but i am super happy where we're at at the moment i also have a couple of these like frog suction cup things um that i bought ages ago and i wanted to include them because i do think they're really cute and i got those from sheen i believe there are lots of cute bits you can get on etsy and stuff like that lots of 3d like hides and ledges etc so definitely take a look on there but yeah i'm absolutely obsessed with my enclosure and just how much they use up all the space in terms of feeding now i feed all my adults two to three times a week and i'll kind of just give them however much they want to eat within like a 15 minute period this is just kind of a rule of thumb for me babies though you want to be feeding more often you definitely want to be offering food at least once a day and the key to the best diet possible with amphibians reptiles you name it is variety so with this i'm talking about not only the feeders but what you gut load them with for example i keep colonies of locusts crickets dubia roaches and they're all fed with a variety of vegetables so carrots apples whatever's in my fridge really we're really trying to mimic their natural diet and all the different things they would eat plus all of what they would eat if that makes sense so variety is going to be your best friend as well as those three staples i will occasionally buy super worms which is more of a treat wax worms which are definitely a treat silk worms which are actually a great staple they're just super expensive in the uk and plenty of other options variety i'll just say that word that's it variety in terms of feeding also come supplements i supplement all of my reptiles and amphibians diets using the arcadia range again these were kindly gifted to me but i was using them way before arcadia decided to partner with me they actually have a really useful supplement guide on their website which i'll also link down below and what this does is really break down what you should be giving them in each feeding because it can become complicated but essentially you should be dusting down all of your feeders before you give them to your animals the way i do this is i actually keep shakers like salt and pepper shakers and i dust down my insects before they get fed another way you could do this is buy like a jar put the insects and the supplements into the jar and give it a shake and then i just use my tongs to feed them to my frogs On days one to three, I use the calcium without D3. On day four, you should be using the calcium with magnesium. Lots of people miss this one, but again, magnesium is something that's really lacking in diet. Then you go back to your usual calcium through days five to seven. And then on day eight, you wanna be using calcium with D3. Again, this one's super important. This is how I literally supplement all of my reptiles. It is an eight step feeding process. Of course, literally all of these topics I could talk about for a lot longer, but I want to kind of condense them down and make a quick like care guide show off my white street frogs show off my enclosure so if you do have any questions you are more than welcome to leave them below and i love ideas for new content so if there is something you're specifically interested in for example lighting i can talk about it but i'm just not going to include it in this care guide so anyway guys if you are watching this because you're thinking about white street frogs best of luck if you're just watching it for fun thanks for watching and i will see you all in the next video bye